How's it going guys, welcome back to Dip Discovery and today we're doing a review of the new Ducati Street Fighter V2. This is the 2021 edition, which is still the latest version, so let's get to it. Okay, now I've got this bike actually for my alone bike as my Diavel is currently in getting some work done on the uh, rear brake issue that I had, which I mentioned in the previous video. So um, if you wanna know more about that, have a look at that video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video as well. And if you wanna win one of these bikes, then click on the link in the description. There's a competition there you can enter. So here's the Ducati Street Fighter V2. Now they do two models now, we've got the V2 and the V4. Obviously the V2 is the uh, you know less powerful the one we're talking Talking about 153 brake horsepower only weighs about 178 kilos um, I, I'm not sure if that's wet or or dry i think it's wet weight actually 178 kilos in the uh, in the tank uh, which is really light as well it feels really light when you're when you're lifting it up and um yeah it's a really potent bike so let's have a look at the design first yeah so obviously ducati um well amazing styling as per usual you've got the beautiful single-sided swing arm with the nice diablo rosso tire on there um, again i think they're made by pirelli uh, really nice uh, back wheel there really shows off the um you know the bike in its glory but all their kind of single side swing arms that um, uh, Ducati do as well. Obviously, it's basically a Panigale without the fairing, so full, that kind of naked, no like really uh, wind protection that you've got here. Um, you know, it really shows off. The engine, it is kind of covered up a bit with these kind of plastic casings, but you do kind of see, um, obviously, the important stuff like the clutch covers. You've also got like this bit of a, I think it's like an ECU or something like that down there, but you also see this really cool pipe work as it goes off to the short stubby kind of exhaust. But the exhaust, obviously, you're probably going to end up buying a, um, you know, aftermarket one uh, to make it a bit more louder. Obviously, you can do that as well. Um, now, if you're thinking about competitors, you got competitors for this would be something like the BMW S1000R. You've also got the Kawasaki Z1000. You've got the Aprilia Tuono. Um, what else have we got? We've got the uh, probably the MT09 um, because the MT10 would be the competitor for the V4 version. And I think that's pretty much it, really. Those are your main competitors anyway, from the Jap side as well as the Italian and the German side. Okay, now let's have a look at the front and let's see what the headlights look like. Now the headlight assembly is really, really smart on the Street Fighter. They've done a really good job of making it uh, you know, different from the uh, Panigales, but also kind of making it part of the same family with the kind of uh, pointed nose, like very aggressive looking, angry kind of eyebrow thing going on there. So if you turn it on, you've got daytime running lights. So let's have a look, there we go. So that's what your DRL looks like. It's an automatic DRL. Um, it can sense, you know, what the kind of lighting situation is when you're outside. And then it turns on automatically and it'll also turn on the headlamps automatically as well when it gets too dark. But obviously you can turn that off and control it yourself. So that's what the uh, daytime running light looks like. And obviously it's a really bright day today, so it still stands out. And when you've got the, the dip beam on, uh, as you can see, the, uh, uh, the lamp actually dims and you get the uh, two dual uh, xenons turning on there which look really really mean it looks really awesome at night as well and i do like that they actually have both of them turn on because in a lot of bikes you want to get one for your lower beam or another one for your high beam but this one controls both okay now your riding position now being that it's based off the panigale they haven't really changed much there in terms of the riding position even though it's a naked so it's a very aggressive riding position so when you swing your leg over here now as you can see you're, you're at a very kind of aggressive kind of angle there very race focused very track focused and when you're kind of like this they kind of want you to kind of be more you know hunched over in a racing position than more kind of upright that you might find with other kind of nakeds which is a bit more comfortable so there is quite a um, aggressive position one other thing to bear in mind is it's a very uh quite a high seated position as well here so as you can see like i'm kind of struggling to kind of uh put my feet flat i actually can't because i'm quite short so uh i'm a bit on my tiptoes here as well so that's another thing to bear in mind if you are a bit shorter um but yeah it's uh, it is a very aggressive kind of riding position so i wouldn't say it's kind of good for touring if you do want to do long miles on it it might kind of hurt hurt your back and kind of stuff like that um you know than uh, than a more upright kind of uh, naked bike now on the business side of the bike you can see that we've got a chain driven uh you know uh, engine here with the rear wheel on the swing arm um you've also got this really nice gold um you know adjustable uh, suspension as well and it's got a little 
kind of a dial here that'll make you change it from soft to hard depending on your personal preference. It, gold being, you'd assume it's an Olin's, but it's actually a sax shock that you rear shock that you've got there but still uh, works really well looks really nice as well you've also got this cool pipe work which kind of goes from uh, you know this loop uh, in the exhaust uh, which looks really smart as well at certain angles um, and you know this one's fitted with data tag which you get standard from Ducati as well which is also good to know as well one thing to note is although the side stand looks really awesome and the way it's designed it actually attracts a lot of dirt from your boot dead easily and it gets scuffed up a lot so you could be constantly cleaning that thing um, so let's have a look at the brakes so the brake suspension and the suspension setup we've got shower is it shower? I think that's how you pronounce it. Shower uh, suspension on the front there. And we've also got these really big Brembo uh, brakes, which have got loads of stopping power, four pot. Um, you know, well, the only thing I'd probably would have liked to have seen is if they matched the, um, uh, the brake, uh, sorry, the suspension spring uh, housing color, the same gold as they did on the, uh, the Sax one, that would have looked a bit smarter because I've seen that on some other Ducatis before, but they haven't gone with this like titanium and gunmetal, but the Brembo's are really good, good touch and they have bags of stopping power. Now, in terms of uh, the pillion support, you have got this really high up kind of uh, section where the pillion can sit um, and they've only got this little uh, handle to grab onto. Um, so you'd have to be a brave pillion to sit on there. And this is actually where the storage is as well for the bike. So if you open up the, uh, unlock the rear storage you push that forward and you've only got this so it's a really tiny kind of space where you can fit like maybe i don't know a pack of chewits something like that um, but you can't actually lift this up there's no storage underneath here now in terms of your handlebars and switch gear setup you've got this really nice steering dampener which comes standard on the uh, v2 uh, s model so you got that as well which is a nice thing to see so if you ever hit like a pothole or something or start getting steering vibration that'll get eliminated by the steering dampener uh, you've also here you can adjust where the the shower uh, front fork you know tension and um, you can do all that there as well. Um, you've also got um, here is where you uh, enter your riding mode, your horn. Um, obviously you've got your uh, left and right for your indicator and that's what you use to go through the menus and that's where you can adjust the, um, the dip beam. Um, now to turn it on, um, it's not a button, it's actually a rocker switch. So you just pull that all the way down and then that will actually uh, turn on the engine. You've got your uh, uh, main uh, beam there and you've also got a hazards uh, switch as well if you want to turn on the hazard switch. There is a typical kind of like uh, little play here in the uh, handlebar which they try to mimic the uh, cable uh, thing, uh, the cable kind of feel of a throttle but um, you know it's still ride by wire so it's a bit kind of pointless you can get Ducati spaces separately to kind of uh, make it a bit more tighter. Um, the mirrors themselves, um, typical Ducati, they are pretty useless in that they um, they uh, you know they come a bit loose over time and you have to tighten it otherwise they vibrate a lot so that's something else to bear in mind let's look at the infotainment okay so this is your infotainment screen now the kit it actually uses a, it, it's not a keyless one which we've seen on some of the multi stars and the diavels you have to actually use a key so we can put that in there get it in and then we'll turn it on so you get greeted with the Ducati logo and the startup animation which is nice and smart it's a very race focused um, display so as you can see they've kind of um, uh, gone for a quite a minimal looking setup on the uh, the dials here so we've got the rev counter which goes here and then obviously you've got your gear indicator there and then this is your miles per hour which says there as well what is annoying about this particular thing and I've had a look myself like there's no way you can actually have a fuel gauge a fuel range option on the uh, the dash so you can't actually know how much fuel you get all it does is tell you that you've got low fuel or you've got reserve time to tell you that you're knackered and you need to go to a shell garage to fill up so that's something to bear in mind on the sides here it shows you your dynamic track control abs all that kind of stuff ducati wheelie control um it says how what kind of setting they're kind of put on depending on what rider mode you're in so you need to press your your mode button um and then you can change your riding modes there so you can kind of go up and down you know sport road and wet and then it kind of adjusts how much um you know dry rider aids it's got on there as well and then if you press exit you go back to the screen now this is the default screen you can't actually change it to any other kind of type of settings uh, from what i've seen anyway um but if you kind of go 
into the settings menu um, you can change various things here so again you can change riding modes and, and what kind of settings you want for them riding modes you can also change the pin code the daytime running lights the backlight of the actual um, uh, you know display from auto to day or night or you know just leave it as default you change the date and time and then service and then you've got your your lap timers there and lap data which you can have tire calibration as well um, you've got your turn indicators whether you want them auto off so they have got auto uh, disabling uh, turn indicators there um, and what else have we got here uh, we've also got the unit so if you want to change the speed you know from miles to kilometers per hour temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius um, and you've also got info which just tells you what your battery voltage is and what RPM you're running so yeah there's quite a basic one very track focused very uh, um, uh, you know uh, racing focused uh, tachometer there okay now we're going to take this thing out for a ride and we're going to see what it's like actually on the road Okay guys, so here we are out on the road with the Street Fighter V2. So I'm on my way to uh, the Shell garage to get some more fuel for this thing because it's been loaned to me with a bit of a reserve tank. And that brings me on to that pain point that I mentioned earlier is the fact that you don't get a um, fuel gauge um, with the uh, Street Fighter, which is kind of annoying. I think the Aprilia Tuono actually has the same thing um, and what it is I think they justify it by saying oh you don't need to know how much fuel you've got actually in the bike because it's a race bike and all you need to know is when you need to fill up which is what the reserve light is for but obviously I think that's uh, utter bollocks everyone wants a fuel gauge it's just uh, there's no reason not to have it especially when you've got a digital gauge like this um, you know on my Diavel you can change the uh, type of screen you want whether you want it as a race mode or more city style or touring you can get you can change all that there's no reason why I don't see why Ducati wouldn't do that on the Street Fighter it might be the same on the Panigale as well I bet but yeah really annoying um, but to be honest, uh, Ducati fuel uh, senders aren't the best anyway. They tend to go faulty a lot, so maybe that's why they just sacked it off. So they don't have to uh, bother with the complaints by not having uh, a fuel sender. That's the thing. You can't complain about a faulty fuel sender if you don't have a fuel sender. So maybe that's the uh, Italian logic there. So anyway, I'm on my way there, looking at the fuel consumption. As you can see here, it's saying that I'm averaging about 68 mpg. Obviously, I've not ridden it hard yet, um, which I will do in a bit later. But from what I've seen online, people are reporting that it averages around 55 to 58 mpg. Um, you know, on average, kind of uh, used bit of B roads. Um, you know, um, obviously, it's uh, it's a naked bike, so you probably aren't going to use it for touring anyway. Um, without the wind protection um, but it feels quite nice to ride now um, unlike obviously I'm used to Diablo where the tank extends quite far in front of you um, and you sit a bit further back this is a quite a aggressive riding position it is very much more like a sports bike so if you are coming from um, you know a fully fed sports bike you'll probably find yourself a bit at home on the uh, Street Fighter V2 with its hunched over you know sporty riding position um, it is a very light bike um, you can feel the weight is quite well balanced and um, it doesn't feel very heavy um, to move around you know corner to corner weaving in and out through traffic just wheeling it around in a, uh, you know a car park or trying to get it out your driveway so you know um, I'd say if you're concerned about weight you wouldn't have an issue with this one being only about 178 kilograms is not too bad um, when compared to my Diablo which is about 225 something like that uh, 220 um, so you know uh, that um, lesser 30 odd kilograms makes a big difference 
so here's the shell garage current price £1.62 for your regular unleaded obviously I'm going to be putting a V power in this thing I'm only going to put in a about a fiver it's not my bike is it so let's see okay so obviously standard Ducati fuel tank effort get that V power probably only get like 10 mil of fuel for five pound with the current prices five pound two I'm sorry Ducati that's all you're getting today that right, yeah? yeah thanks cool. cheers thanks a lot right. so five pound two P let's see if that um, fuel warning lights gone and it has I think for now probably come back on straight away so we're back off okay so I've been riding it in sport mode anyway um, the throttle is uh, quite responsive 100% uh, you know it has got that kind of uh, it's got like a bit of a, a sweet spot this engine um, the V2 because I find like between like where would I say between like um, it's a bit hard here yeah between after that 4000 rpm that's when it really starts to kick you in the balls and it starts to to launch itself off um, so that's I think that's where the sweet spot is personally in the sport mode um, but uh, yeah let's uh, let's see if we can get some B rows and see how it handles there now that brings me on to like who is this bike for now obviously Street Fighter V2 is a naked sports bike so um, you know some nakeds they go for a more of a, a casual market with the riding jeans and all that kind of stuff um, and then some of them go for the uh, track day guys you know wear the full leathers the full suit all that kind of stuff um, I think Ducati are kind of marketing the Street Fighter to uh, both kind of crowds um, but yeah obviously airing more on the side of the racing side of uh, the Street Fighter so you know you can people uh, do say the Street Fighter is really good around the city um, if you're riding in the city you know razzing out in and out of uh, you know uh, tight roads all that kind of stuff but then you want to take it on some B roads as well and maybe you do a bit of uh, track days as well then you know that's what the street fighter is kind of good at um, and I can see why they are saying that now the thing is it's a bit more probably a bit more relaxed than the Panigale the Panigale I have rid one before I think it was a 959 or was it a V2 I can't remember but yeah obviously the same engine um, but yeah, that was a really harsh ride. Suspension was really hard as well. Um, I think they've changed the suspension a bit on this one. It feels a, a lot more bone shaking and it's um, a bit more chilled out. Like it's a bit softer um, on the road. And it's probably that sack shock that's helping out definitely um, with the uh, Panigale V2, uh, with the Street Fighter V2. Now it's a very compact ride. It feels tight, it feels very narrow and slim um, like you know you feel like you can easily weave in and out of traffic with this thing and I think that's why people say it's good for cities if you stick in traffic you can easily kind of you're quite nimble on this and kind of go through uh, the traffic um, I had this feeling with the Panigale as well uh, it felt very narrow like you could uh, um, like it felt almost like a toy <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but it, it does kind of have that feeling to it um, obviously it's probably the characteristic of the V2 engine as well being that it's um, quite a, a vibrate engine um, that uh, you know shakes quite a bit which is you tend to get that with, uh, with V-twins um, then obviously you're in line 4 that like you see on Japanese kind of bikes so it's a very different experience that you're going to have than riding the uh, the Japanese or the BMW because um, they are quite different engines um, but yeah it's weird because 
you can see like your, where your headlight is, like it's right there. And then when I'm on the Diavel, you, it's not like that. You you set a bit further back, so it's kind. Of, it's almost like you're about to like jump off it kind of thing, um, which is a bit uh, a weird because uh, when you feel the when you hit that front brake, you kind of almost like feel that jolt kind of going forward like that um, into the headlight. You know, you can feel the front tire braking. Um, where you don't really have that with uh, the Diavel where you're sat a bit further back because you've got that huge tank in front of you. Now the seat, I wouldn't say the seat is that comfortable. Um, it's uh, a bit stiff. Um, I don't know if maybe that's because I'm used to the Diavel which is actually quite a comfortable seat to be honest. Um, but um, yeah, it is a bit stiff. Um, you can get more comfortable seats for this thing with um, uh, that have got like uh, the gel inserts and all that kind of stuff. Um, might be worth considering if you are kind of doing a bit more longer miles on it. Um, but the seat is also a bit slippery, I think. Like, obviously, I'm wearing like riding uh, uh, jeans set up going on. Um, and you kind of slip on it quite easily, but but they're obviously the same materials on the pillion, so you don't want a pillion on this without getting one of them grippy things that you put over the uh, the seats, you know, to keep them in place. Now, one thing I found with the uh, mirrors is I don't know, I I was finding it hard to get them in the right place. Like I don't think, and I'm still not completely happy with where they are. But there's only so much you can actually uh, uh, manoeuvre them. Like, you can't go up and down. You can only go, like, backwards and forwards and left, right. Bit of a weird way they kind of designed it, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, that's it's quite a bit annoying. Like, you know, if I want to look behind me, I have to kind of, like, duck a bit to kind of see exactly what is actually behind me and get my head in the right position um, but I don't know if that's just me setting it up wrong anyway so if you want to change the um, the, the uh, sport mode uh, sorry the dry riding mode uh, while you're riding you have to press and hold the mode button and it brings up this menu uh, I don't know if you can see it but then you use the uh, arrows to pick which road you want which uh, driving mode you want and then once you've picked it you have to let go of the throttle and then press and hold and then it'll change the, uh, the riding mode for you so I've got it set to road now um, which is designed for more your kind of uh, city riding a bit more chilled out <coughs> more traction control um, you know all that kind of jazz um, but I think you still get the, uh, the full power the 153 brake horsepower it's just a bit more uh, you know, smooth the way it delivers you <coughs> than um, sport mode is, and then obviously you've got wet, which reduces the power um, to about 100 brake horsepower. It makes it a lot more manageable. Puts all the uh, riding aids um, up, so it's a lot more manageable of a uh, machine. So that's uh, something to uh, bear in mind there. But um, for the purposes of the rest of this video, I'm going to keep it on sport mode because that's what it's all about now one thing I have noticed is these uh, foot pegs uh, and the way that they're designed they look quite nice but they're actually a bit pointy a bit sharp and I don't know if it's probably because I'm short but when you put your you know your legs down um, and if it hits the, uh, the back of your uh, legs um, because it's so pointy it kind of hurts <laughs> like it like, digs in uh, so I have to keep remembering to kind of widen out my uh, legs as I touch them down to the ground but the problem with me is obviously because it's uh, quite a high up seated position um, it's uh, uh, you know I'm on my tiptoes already so um, yeah it can be quite annoying but it's something just to get used to I guess so that's the kind of overtaking power you've got and of course to counteract it you've got them powerful brakes um, which is really good something you need but here we're on the uh, twisty roads and this is where I'm guessing the whole race pedigree 
of the Street Fighter will come to its own. I think a fly just flew into my butt, which is quite annoying. But yeah, I mean, you know, it picks up really, really quick after that, you know, that, that 4,000 RPM burst. And then, you know, it kind of pulls into that corner quite well. Um, so yeah, I mean, the handling's really good. Um, it handles, you know, like your Panagali, but it feels like almost faster than the Panagali, even though it's the same engine. And I think that's just it's because it's a naked and all that wind's hitting you, you know? So obviously you do get a lot more wind noise and turbulence with this thing um, than you would do with the um, uh, Panagali because the, it's throwing the wind away from you. So this feels a bit more raw, you know, um, it's a bit more uh, engaging to ride in terms of like that, like you can feel the elements a lot more. Um, and you know it does stick, it sticks to the road really well um, but you just have to do it to your ability like you know the riding mo aids are there for a reason and you can adjust each one you know the way kind of you want it to but you know they are there to help you and um, it, it does feel like it's there to kind of help you out you can, you can feel them working on this thing so that's about it really so hope you like my video anyway and if you've got any questions on what i thought of the uh street fighter v2 by ducati you know obviously drop us a, a comment and i'll try and answer it but uh yeah really really cool bike um is it for me personally i wouldn't be buying one for myself i do i think after being on the diavel i kind of prefer the relaxed kind of uh a seating position but this is a bit too aggressive for me I'll, I prefer to have the chilled out uh, uh, seating position a bit more upright than hunched over now but um, I can see why this would appeal to so many people um, you know the type of bike it is and it, uh, it, it is quite compact and nice uh, light to ride um, and it's a very good option if you are thinking of one of these compared to its competitors so anyway drop us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you on the next one